Longstreet and Grant were at West Point at the same time. They became fast friends, although they had uh, quite different personalities. Uh, they um, courted their wives uh, uh, at the same time. They were posted to Jefferson Barracks in Missouri. They fought in the Mexican War. Um, their wives and families became friends, and indeed, Longstreet's mother was a distant cousin of Grant's wife, Julia, so there was even a, a, a sort of kin uh, connection there. Obviously, the war disrupts the friendship, but uh, the friendship looms large again at another one of those moments, a place in time, not Gettysburg, but a place in time that is essential to understanding James Longstreet's story, and that is Appomattox, Virginia, 1865. So Grant's army brings Lee's army to heel. Grant famously offers his generous surrender terms. At the end of a war that has resulted in the deaths of 750,000 soldiers, Grant says, you Confederates are free to go home, no, no reprisals, no punishments, provided you pledge your future allegiance to the Union, that you won't take up arms against the government again, and that you'll obey the law. Pretty, pretty good deal. So Grant's terms were not intended to exonerate the Confederates. They were intended to change hearts and minds, to effect atonement, and to effect repentance, and to effect submission and compliance. And Longstreet, almost uniquely, among Confederates at that, at that rank and among Confederates, period, interprets those terms through the lens of his friendship with U.S. Grant. That, to Longstreet, those are, that's an honorable offer made by an honorable man, and Confederates are obliged, as they accept those terms, to, to do what Grant intended, that is to give the victors way a chance. 